The Lagos Business School, in partnership with Insights to Impact, hosted a seminar which focused on the team, platforms, and the future of financial services in a digital Nigeria. It brought together stakeholders in the digital technology space, entrepreneurs, and stakeholders in the financial services industry. Dr. Olainka David West, the academic director, Lagos Business School, in her presentation at the event, gave insights into the platforms in Africa, trends, opportunities, and challenges. You know, there are certain cap capabilities and competences you need in some of these spaces that are not normal brick and mortar traditional business. One of the conversations I had with a platform operator was the role of merchandising, right? How do we know what to stock? How do we know what quantities? How do we know what the market trends are going like? So things like talent and building the right talent to ensure that we can sustain these industries was also, were also some of the constraints that we found generally. Where are the opportunities? I think we have a lot of opportunities because this issue about exchanging, we say we live in a sharing economy, we say we live in an on-demand economy, right? That's the only way that we can do it through platforms where you can aggregate and build your network effects to ensure that we can actually match and deliver products and services effectively. The opportunities to catalyze and advance economic systems and economic development. You know, we, you know we've moved from um, the digital divide to digital literacy, financial literacy, and different other things. But then, all these have a ripple effect. And we can't stop now, but we, if there's opportunities to catalyze economic development. We need to create jobs. Yes, we have a challenge in Africa. We don't have enough jobs, or we don't have enough workers. So it's a chicken and egg. Can we build the digital talent to create new digital jobs? You know, there's a, you know when we talk about global work, one thing we don't realize is now work moves according to time zones, right? So you find some companies who work 24 hours, but they work out of different of, um, locations wherever there is daylight, generally. When I looked at that map a couple of years ago, I found out that within the African time zone, Kenya was actually the country of choice for this type of work. So we can create more digital jobs and create services in general. Finally, inclusion also requires ubiquitous mobile penetration. So we need to think about how do we begin to scale and integrate our markets and systems. And I think MTN and Orange have started this in terms of integrating their mobile money systems in some, in, in some African markets. And we need to think like that because looking at um, the cost to serve in terms of the cost to remit money across borders in Africa, we have serious challenges. So we need to do these things in, econom in ways that are economical, because I think the World Bank has a target that we must be able to do remittances under $5. That's a long way to go. But I think that if we continue building systems and working through these opportunities, we will see, we will have an end, a, a, a good end in, in itself. Mr. Herman Smith, Technical Director and Head of Clients Insights, Insights to Impact Facility, shared his perspective on the future of financial services in a digital Nigeria. In Africa, um, despite the fact that we've got much lower um, internet penetration, we see similar figures in terms of the number of individuals who indicate that they make money from the platform economy. So in the US, it's 1.6%. In Africa, um, it was between 1 and 7% across our eight, or 1 and 3% across our eight focus countries. So we're already seeing a large number of individuals saying that they're generating income from these platforms. So this is really exciting. These platforms give us a way to provide financial services um, uh, in, uh, um, uh, in a formal way, and it allows us to access a large number of people already on these platforms. So that's really why it's exciting for us. Another reason why it was exciting for us is because we're seeing quite a number of activities or happening in this transactional digital platform space. The graphic behind me shows the number of platforms that have been launched from 2005 up until 2018. Um, so these, um, it goes up, it's cumulative, so every year new platforms launch and that line uh, goes up. So we've recorded it by launch date and as you can see, um, we're seeing an acceleration in the number of platforms being launched in these different markets. Once again, really exciting. So we're seeing on the supply side, 
lots of new entrants into the markets across a variety of uh, sectors. And on the demand side uh, or the participation on these platforms, we're seeing a large number of people participate. So we're actually quite excited to monitor this over the coming years to see which sectors, um, which countries, um, uh, which type of activities are being matched and how can we leverage that um, uh, to um, improve the financial sector. And what you'll see here is that Nigeria is really one of the forerunners in uh, launching um, digital platforms. So of the eight countries which we looked at in southern, east and west Africa, Nigeria is really the one which stands out. We have um, 87 platforms and we'll go into a little bit more detail around what those platforms look like. Um, but um, what's really exciting is that the large majority of those platforms are indigenous generated by um, entrepreneurs in Nigeria, um, and that a large number of those offer financial services. So looking specifically at Nigeria, um, uh, what we see is that 76% um, of the 80 odd platforms uh, in Nigeria are homegrown. Um, and what homegrown means or indigenous means obviously um, uh, can have various definitions, but we looked at um, uh, platforms that originated and operated in the home country. So uh, I know there's some contentions about Jumia's headquarters, um, but for us that would be uh, considered a Nigerian platform. Uh, the number of platforms, as we indicated, 87, it's got the second largest um, trailing only South Africa in the countries that we've looked at. Um, and then uh, looking at financial services, um, Nigerian platforms really are leading the pack in terms of partnering with financial services providers on the insurance um, and digital wallet space. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Also, uh, just the percentage of the adult population participating or generating income from platform economy, Nigeria is by far the leader. Um, uh, not only in terms of the number of individuals, so the absolute number, but also the percentage of adults operating um, uh, on uh, the um, sector. I think. Uh, of the total number of the digital workers uh, that we um, identified across Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Nigeria accounts for two-thirds of that. So really um, uh, impressive uh, participation on these platforms. Yep. The seminar also featured short presentations and discussion of case studies from some of the business leaders in the digital financial services and platform space. Mr. Herman Smith and Dr. Lainka David West speak further on the seminar. From our research, it's clear that uh, Nigeria is uh, leading um, uh, countries in sub-Saharan Africa by just demonstrating what good partnerships can look like between virtual marketplaces or online platforms uh, and the financial sector. So um, we're really excited to be able to um, convene financial services providers and virtual marketplaces in Nigeria to talk about the experience to date, uh, what has worked in these partnerships, uh, where there's still some challenges and ultimately how can we as the development community and the academic community support the good work that they're doing. So what inspired this whole study and this um, seminar bringing stakeholders in the ecosystem? Okay, I think that there are multiple points of convergence in what we do at LBS and what we've been doing in the area of inclusive um, finance. And we found out that one of the things we found since our 2016 State of Market report was that the platform um, business, the platform business, the digital platform was the sort of conduit that we need to sort of grow and expand financial services. So I had also done some work in the platform economy and just trying to understand what the platform dynamics were in Africa. Then we also worked in financial inclusion and had hypothesized that platforms are one tool that we can use to grow and expand financial services, especially regarding building network effects. Then I to I also have been working in that space of digital platforms, transactions platforms for financial services so it was just the convergence of different initiatives that had that had started many years ago and I think that's the beautiful thing about when you're doing work in almost greenfield areas that continue doing the work continue exploring and expanding what you're trying to do and eventually convergent points will come and then you begin to scale and grow in every idea and every concept and finally with this partnership with insight to impact what are we expecting to see in terms of research and development in driving platform economies? Because this is very critical, proper research, helping even those in the industry. 
Okay, so I, I think we'd need to do two things with um, our relationship with eye to eye. The first is, first of all, even understand the depth and the nature and provide the evidence that we can say, oh, these are the things and these are solutions or the interventions that are required. But I, it doesn't end there because from our, my experience, we find out that even to get the evidence and the results that you find from research absorbed into companies is the next step. So we also need to build intervention programs and um, concepts that we can take and pilot in businesses so we can see, oh, do these concepts work? If they don't work, what can make them work? How will they work? So that, that, those are the two things I really would like to see. So it's not just about doing the research and finding out, deepening the evidence pool, but it's now going the next leg forward to say what interventions and what concepts can work in an environment like Nigeria. As Dr. Yinka's research very clearly shows, there are definitely some key infrastructure, financial inclusion and policy constraints for these platforms to deliver the type of inclusive growth that we want to see in uh, Nigeria. Um, but um, as uh, our panelists from Wesabi and from Supermart um, have uh, indicated today, there are really good ways in which financial services products can help us overcome some of those challenges uh, we face. And while they can't bridge um, uh, in totality the infrastructure challenges or policy challenges, uh, they can go a long way to help platforms in other ways to improve the customer experience, uh, keep uh, platform participants uh, engaged for longer periods of time and higher um, size transactions and primarily help individuals who are using these platforms to generate income, so enterprises providing goods and services, helping them stay on longer, um, helping them derive more benefit from their interaction on these platforms. A major takeaway from this seminar is the need for collaboration between digital platform providers and financial services providers, which will go a long way in achieving skill in financial inclusion and a more inclusive socioeconomic space.